You are my sunshine, hey. my only sunshine. Hey. You're Mr. Smiles, you make me happy. And when the day is growing dim, I'll come to you because I love your smiles. What? This is the Simple Wholesaling Podcast, episode 94. What's going on, you Simple Wholesaling Nation out there? Thank you for joining us again on another episode of the Simple Wholesaling Podcast. And I'm your host, Brett Snodgrass, and I'm with my handsome and smiling co-host, Jaron Barnes, who I love. What's up? Thanks, bro. (laughs) What's up, man? What's going on? What's going on in your world? Just trying to crush it. Yep. Just kill it at life, man. I'm tired <laughs> of the excuses. Us Americans, we need to us uh for like what, I don't know, not first generation, but like multi generation American people, we need to stop we need to suck it up, buttercup, and get to work. That's right. We need to study the no class we need to study all the information before the class even happens. That's right. We need to study Vinny Chopra, who's our Vinny guest Chopra. today. <laughs> Him and Grant Cordon, uh, they are like polar opposites personality wise, but they should do something <laughs> together. Amen. Amen. Well, hey guys, we had a great show for you on the Simple Wholesaling Podcast today. Our guest is Vinny Chopra, and uh, they call Vinny Mr. Smiles because he's always smiling, he's always so positive, and he really puts you in your place. But I always feel so happy to be in my place. Yep. After no, talking I, to him, I love it, man. He's like, you literally walk away talking to him like he just. If uh, encouragement could be bu- bundled up and ber- personified as a human being, that's our guest today. Yeah, definitely. And uh, he he came overseas with seven bucks in his pocket, and then he just bought an eleven million dollar apartment building in the same neighborhood that he used to door knock yeah. and sell encyclopedias in. That's crazy. That's amazing. crazy. It's just oh man, crazy. So great interview for you guys, and uh, so yeah, man. I just uh, wanted to say, anything else going on? No, man. I um, I'm not really. I'm no. Just, I mean, I'm I'm. Uh, there's things enjoying happening. 2018. There's yes, I'm enjoying 2018. Good. There's things happening in episode 96 as a plug in the future. Yeah. So stay. We've t- already recorded. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned for that, guys. But uh, but yeah, things are things are going well here. How's Simpl- Florida? It's good, man. Just getting out of this cold. I'm, you know, it was like zero degrees here, and I was Less, feeling it. It was like minus. Yeah, my family had like this sickness going on, and uh, I just me and my daughter went to Florida, uh, got out of here for a little bit, and it was amazing. I just um, that's been, and I was saying on an interview, I really just want to this year. I feel like I just want to really experience life, and also coming back to experiencing God. And I really want to practice and put that into my life. I want to stop watching other people do things. And I just want to experience. And uh, that's kind of what I've been, what I've been uh, striving for this year already. Yeah, so, man. so it's been good. It's awesome. And let's get into Brett's Insight. Let's do it. <laughs> Brett's Insight of the Week. In today's Inside the Week, guys, we're going to talk to you about wholesaling and what you need to do. You're going to talk about wholesaling on the yeah. Simple Wholesaling Show? Yeah. I'm going to talk about what? wholesaling. Uh, yeah, you, definitely. It's anonymity. crazy. It is ridiculous. <laughs> I can't believe we're doing it. But we are. It's like, what, 94 episodes <laughs> in? We actually have a point to what we're talking about? <laughs> That's right. That's right. But we're talking about if you're a new wholesaler and you're trying to find deals for an experienced wholesaler like ourselves, what do you do and how do you bring value uh, to them? What's the best way to find deals uh, to bring to them and how do you approach them? Number one, I want to talk about the approach. I get a lot of various emails, phone calls, texts uh, that come over on you know on my desk and it, it's all over the board how people present these deals that I'm trying to help them with. You know, sometimes people will just text me an address. That's it. You know, uh, some people text me a book with you know 65 pictures, uh, <laughs> five and a half paragraphs. I'd rather and get the address like in the crazy. book. I hate, <laughs> I hate it when people send me like. 
You're, if you send an email to anybody who's super busy, it should be no more, no more than four to five lines at most. Yeah. Better to keep it in the three lines. Like three lines, that's it. <laughs> really just kind of goes back to the 80-20 rule. I mean, I really just want to know the most important points. So maybe instead of putting everything in a paragraph form, put it in a bullet point form. You know, bedrooms, bathrooms, uh, if it has a garage, year it was built, and and then tell me a little bit of the story of the house, and that's it. You know, five maybe bullet points, and then the pictures and the video obviously is is really the only things that I need. Um, you know, and that's probably the best way to approach me is by email. If someone calls me again, if someone's really busy, a call isn't always the best way because even if I do talk to you, it's hard for me to retain the information. So, you know, people say, Hey, what do you think about this deal? They'll give me a call. Hey, what do you think about this deal? One, two, three Elm street. And uh, it's on this, 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 and then I've already forgot about the property. Uh, they haven't given me any pictures uh, and they want me to analyze it. Like if I'm driving, they want me to analyze it right then and there. I can't look at comps. I can't really do anything. So at the end of the conversation, if I talk to this person for 20 minutes, at the end of the conversation, what am I going to say? I'm going to say, hey, can you email me the details? Because I've already forgotten everything and I need pictures and a video. So the best way is uh, if someone doesn't answer their phone or if they don't answer their emails that much, email them and then send them a quick text uh, and, and whatnot. That's probably the best way to approach a deal. How do you find deals? You know, this episode here that we talked to Vinny about, it's all about the grind. It's all about hustle. You know, he was out door knocking, selling encyclopedias and Bibles from door to door, you know, and that's kind of how he got started in the entrepreneurship world. And you can go back and do the same thing. You don't have to find the latest and greatest technology uh, to find deals and have all the, the little gadgets and here and there. You can just go out and hustle door knock. You know, I know Jaron, he used to do that when he first got started in real estate. So door knock, drive for dollars, write some letters, get out there and, and just grind it out and hustle. I want to say door deals. knocking is actually a pretty untapped strategy for deal flow. And you, yeah, you're going to get a lot of rejections, but honestly, if you just like went door to door and you just said, Hey, I love to buy properties that are distressed and need a lot of work. Can I give you my contact information? And if anything comes up, just call me. And I promise you, if you did that, it's, that's like, all that costs you is your time. Mm -hmm. And that'll get you deals. Yeah. If you're nah. systematic and you have a system, I mean, as people like to be all fancy smancy and have all these things, but like you don't have any money and all you have is hustle, go hustle. Hit your head mm -hmm. against the wall until it makes money. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. There's definitely something to that. I think that like, you know, what Vinny talks about in his interview is that sometimes we've lost that, that work ethic, that just getting out there, hustling, hard work, making sure, you know, we're hitting our accountability numbers. We're putting in a hundred offers a week, whatever it is, uh, to get that deal and then approach somebody like myself or another experienced wholesaler. And, uh, the way that I talked about before email, uh, pictures, five bullet points, and then shoot us a quick text just saying, Hey, I sent this deal over to you. It's really all we need. So that's pretty much the best way. If you're brand new, uh, to, to find deals. And I mean, there's no really secrets, you know, that's the biggest thing. There's no really secrets. I, I we've talked about how to find deals on past shows through direct mail, uh, drive for dollars, door knocking online. There's really no secrets. All it is, is someone out there, the person that's going to hustle the most, is going to get the deals. And that's, uh, that's really what it boils down to. Yes, sir. Uh, today on Spiritual Foundations, guys, we're going to go to Ezekiel eleven nineteen, And I love this verse uh, because it really, you know, has been in my life and has uh, just been a time where I've been able to read this verse and really, you know, have you ever been in your life where you've just had kind of just a heart that has been hardened, that you've had some negativity come into your life and you've had some circumstances happen and you don't understand them and you're hardened toward your family, your heart's hardened toward God and it's hardened toward other people. And uh, this verse really um, is a prayer that I have prayed 
and you know just a god to let my heart be this and it comes from ezekiel eleven nineteen. it says i will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them i will remove from their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh and it's so funny that you know we go through the same thing today that people went through thousands of years ago and and, and it always boils down to a heart issue you know anything that you're going through in life if you're dealing with you know anger or sin or uh, you know whatever it is in, in your life you need to check your heart and this is a great prayer to pray to God is to God just you know give me that heart of flesh give me that heart that loves people that has that passion uh, for you, that hunger for serving you, that hunger for serving other people. Give me that heart because right now my heart is hard and I don't understand all these different circumstances. I don't understand all these different things that are going on. But I am praying for that heart of flesh. And I believe that there was a huge part of my life that I had this, this big, uh, hard heart as big heart of stone. I didn't care about other people. I cared only about myself. And that is our human nature. You know, we care most about ourselves. But what God does is, you you know, I thought that I loved people. I thought I knew what love was. But when God comes into your life, it's like amazing. All of a sudden, you're, you know, th- I was living in this black and white world and all of a sudden now it has color. And that's what he does. He makes the love that I thought I knew go so much deeper. Uh, he makes me wanting to help people, you know, so much more. And um, so God gives you that heart of flesh, you know, basically. So right now, I want you to ask yourself, is there something in your life that you're just being ungrateful for? Is there something in your life that, you know, someone has done you wrong and you just have this negative heart and heart towards them? This is a great scripture to go to. Again, it's Ezekiel eleven nineteen, and it's a great prayer to say is like God. Right now, I am not being able to forgive my dad for what he did, or I'm not being able to uh, love my wife the way that she needs to be loved because, you know, she's. I just don't know, or I'm not being able to be the father that I'm supposed to be, or the business leader that I'm supposed to be, I'm hardened towards this person that just ripped me off, this contractor stole 10 grand, I don't know what to do with all that, and all this negativity is coming at me, and I'm not sure what to do. I want you guys to stop right now, and I want you to say the prayer that God, right now, please, please remove this heart of stone and give me the heart of flesh, and see what God does with that today. This is an uh, interview with Vinny, episode 94. All right, guys, we are so excited for today's guest. We have Mr. Smiles himself, Vinny Chopra. And uh, Vinny is always smiling because he believes in an individual's ability to shape the world around them through positive thoughts and selfless actions. He has been a passionate, motivational speaker and a teacher for over three decades, which is like older than Jaren. So that's, that's quite a long time. <laughs> And the story behind Vinny's success in real estate investing and syndications is a testament to the power of enthusiasm, passion, persistence, and positivity. And I am stoked to have you on the show today, Vinny. We were reading your bio just before the show, and uh, we are uh, amazed at hearing your story. So thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be with you both. I really do appreciate that. We're going to kill it. We're going to kill it and we're going to crush it. I'm going to crush it. Yeah. Just smiles. So, hey, let's dive into your story, Mr. Motivational Speaker. Um, I mean, take us to the beginning. Where did it all start? You know, to be truthful, I, I'm a humble man. Uh, well, I've grown to be. <laughs> but, you know, I grew up in New Delhi, India, modest living with uh, six siblings, you know, in the family and just lived in like uh, one bedroom, two bedroom apartment. 
and then I always wanted to be an engineer in India. Either you become a doctor, engineer, or a <laughs> lawyer, you know, when you grow up. So I always wanted to break toys and put them together. Then my parents said, well, maybe mechanical engineer would be a good one. And I did. I became one. And uh, I wanted to come to USA to do my MBA in marketing. I thought engineering, mechanical engineering, and marketing will really be a good combination. That's when I came into this country about 40 years back with $7 in my pocket. Wow. Wow. Seven bucks. That's all you had. <laughs> That's all I had. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, tell us about that. So you, you, you come over here to, to do the engineering and you only had $7. So take us into, you know, how you, you know, became successful and, and where you kind of uh, started with all that and bring us up to, to speed of today. Sure, sure. How did you get into speaking and all that? So that's good. Oh, totally. I really want to hear about that. Totally, totally. I mean, you know, again, I wanted to just be a little bit better. You know, I did, I found that even in the younger age, like 20 or so, all the way through high school and all, I got scholarship to go to college over there, engineering college in India, New Delhi, and my government paid for me, marriage scholarship, they call it. So wow. they paid for five years of going to the school and that was pretty cool. My parents didn't have to take the burden of that. And I didn't have to raise money, <laughs> you know. But when I came to USA, my uncle gave me a break. My uncle was here. So he put me at his place. And, you know, I wanted to make sure that I earned my tuitions and things yeah. like that to pay for the college. And that's when I got into selling Bibles and encyclopedias door to door in Atlanta, outside Atlanta in uh, Austin, Mableton, Douglasville, in that area, you know, door to door, knocking on doors and selling books. That's what I did. And the uh, rest is history. I went three times, three years, uh, three summers, I would say, because this company only works in the summer with college students to uh, help them earn tuitions, things like that. You run your own business. You're working 80 hours a week, 75 to 80 hours a week starting day at 6.30, 7 o'clock until 9.30. It really caught, gave me a lot of uh, really perspective into hard work and uh, covering rejection and enthusiasm and positive. And that's when I got introduced to Rich Dad, Poor Dad book and Augment Dino's uh, uh, Magic of Thinking Big and Jeffrey J. Schwartz, all those big books, you know. Yeah. And, I'm just going to say this right on the air. I actually said it earlier. Um, you know, a lot of the times, like, I'm a pretty way more philosophical person than I need mm -hmm. to be. But um, one of the struggles that I've had um, as an American is that having some sense of a cultural identity, right? Like, um, I'm uh, my wife is from Kazakhstan. My, mm -hmm. my whole world uh, – is in a different cultural context than like being a traditional white American. Mm -hmm. And for me, what you embody, uh, your story, it's what makes me proud to be an American. When I envision uh, America, I see people who come, who work harder than anybody else and make their dreams come true. And, um, you know, I just, I, I just want to even say that, like, you know, thank you for oh. using the opportunity that this country has to offer and, and pursuing it. Whereas a lot of people, unfortunately, um, on my side of the fence, you know, who like, um, you know, who are born and raised in, in, in this amazing country, a lot of times they don't work hard. They don't even know what hard work is. You know, you talk about 75, 80 hours a week and they're like, I, don't, I would never want to do that. That's crazy. But like yeah. the opportunity that is here that we have in this great nation, I mean, I want to work like yeah. that. You know, yeah. I want to, I, I want to take full advantage of, of, uh, what, what this great place has to offer. So just thank you. Like, thank you for your oh. story. Thank you for your inspiration. You know, it's, um, you are what makes me proud to be an American. So. Oh, thank you. That's yeah. so kind. So kind words. I'm just a humble man. Just got in the right society, you know, and the right friends and right leaders who guided me all through this, you know, over three, 35 years of uh, uh, relationship with one company, only one. I like to just stick with, I've been married now, we, this will be 38th year of our marriage. Wow. My awesome. wife, 
<laughs> Congrats. That's, that's Thank amazing. You. Thank you. We've been living in the Bay Area near San Francisco 38 years. <laughs> We moved from Ohio. I just like most things very stage. You know, I like to really put my mind and I get focused in one thing. And that's all it is to it then, you know? Yeah, uh, I, I was born in Fremont. I'm oh, from, my gosh. Oh yeah, my I'm gosh. from there. Yeah. That's only just half an hour away from where I live in Danville. <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. In Danville. <laughs> This is so close. We are just going back to roots here. Yeah. Uh, I just definitely. want to, I'll go through my whole story, but I do want to let you know a young man, 22 years of age, who was wearing shorts and cutoffs and all and knocking doors in Austell, Georgia. I just bought a property, $11 million worth of property in that same town. Wow. 267 units. Wow. And I just closed on it. <laughs> Wow, oh, man, that's crazy. Can, can you imagine like the mind, like man, being on the other side of that? Like I started off door knocking yeah. $7 in my pocket. And then years later, I buy a million, multi-million dollar syndication. <laughs> it's just. Wow. That's, that's crazy. That's so awesome. I, I want you to really speak to our audience, Vinny, about, about your journey. Um, just what's it been like? You know, has it been just, you know, right off the get go, uh, um, just really, you know, positive and, and an amazing experience for the last, you know, three decades of your life? Has it been a struggle? You know, because as Jared's talking about us Americans, sometimes we just forget, you know, uh, and, and did you just wake up one day and be like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I, I, I'm able to buy an $11 million, you know, building. <laughs> What's it, no, <laughs> what's, no. It, what's it been like and kind of speak to that, you know, because it's hard to imagine doing something for 30 years and um, just kind of talk to our audience about your, your journey and, and what, what has it been like? What's your experience been like? Oh, thank you so much for asking that question. You know, it's amazing when we reach success, people only see the surface, you know, they just see the success but they don't really know the struggle that we all go through to achieve that success. Thank you for asking that. You know, it's been a pretty long, tiring journey to be truthful, mm-hmm. you know, to do what I'm doing today. And I can even go back like 11 years back when I didn't know anything about, I knew zero on commercial real estate. We did buy a lot of single family homes. We thought our retirement will come from single family homes. You know, we started purchasing 30 years back actually. You know, as much as we could save, we kept on buying in different locations in California, in Arizona, in Georgia, you know, in Indiana and all over the place, right? But let me kind of go back. The key thing is one has to get focused in life. If we get focused in life and take massive action, that today is the only day that we have not to worry about yesterday, whether it was a good day or a bad day, even last 30 seconds, I cannot change it. You cannot, nobody can change it. So it's really great to just learn from the past, but burn it. (laughs) You know, I mean, in my life, I don't remember negative things at all. My wife tells me, do you remember that happened, you know, 10 years back, 15 years? I just, my mind has totally blank. It's totally blank. I said, oh, did it really happen? So again, you know, tuning yourself to be positive and making sure that you are giving energy, positive energy and positive energy vibes and positive attitude to everybody around you. That is the key to life, you know, to really enjoy success because success doesn't come right away. A lot of people I'm finding now, you know, who are following me or talking to me, they want overnight success. They say, Vinny, where he is, I want to do the syndication feeling like Vinny, you know, but it didn't happen that way. Anyway, I just wanted to say that I didn't know what letter of intent was. 11 years back. I didn't know what NOI, net operating income was. I didn't know what IRR was. I did not know what COC was. I didn't know nothing. I I don't don't know know what those are either. (laughs) (laughs) We run a real estate investing podcast. (laughs) (laughs) 
I love it. I love it. You know, but let me take you back then, you know, my philosophies in life. Again, you know, being from India and, uh, you know, you have to work hard. I think most Asian cultures, that's what they talk about. I remember the time when I was in junior high school, elementary school, and my dad will hold a school every night after dinner. Hold a school. Listen to this way. And he would teach us and ask us to learn what teacher is going to teach us next day or in a couple of days. So we were learning the material before the teacher was covering it. Mm. And that was this, you know, what upbringing I had. And I always believe in uh, our two children are very, very learned. Our son went to Berkeley. He's an IT specialist. He's a product sales manager, you know, uh, product, yeah, senior product manager. Our daughter went to UCLA and did MBA. I did my master's in, you know, business administration marketing. So I think that is so important in life is to really, you know, crush it, learn at a young age, but now my passion in life right now is to teach what I've done, what little I've done, and I've built systems and things, how to purchase these multi, multi-million dollar, you know, apartment complexes and, you know, in the emerging areas, multifamily, we call it, but also to teach the young people in the high school and college students age so that they can really not only get a W-2 job, but also become an entrepreneur at the same time, yeah. not to watch the television, not to really, you know, waste time in other activities, but concentrate to build a business, mm-hmm. you know, and also just crush it so that when they are 22, 23, 24, to own a fourplex where they're living in one portion and three other portions are paying. So they're living for free and making cash flow, you know, and then get into the real estate side of it. Because in America, real estate is the key. That's where you really are able to crush it and make your, you know, well worth, uh, your net worth go higher and also save on taxes oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, later on in life. <laughs> yeah, 100%. That's Definitely. That's so inspiring. I don't know. It's just for me, like maybe it's because I'm from the Bay Area or what it is. But again, guys, like this is what, um, you know, this level of hustle is it, if you apply, if you turn up the heat on the hustle in America, you can really make whatever you want happen. Like yeah. there are people like there's this like I don't even know how I know this, but there is like this really annoying rapper right now. <laughs> there's a girl rapper came out with this song called Bodek Yellow. It's the most raunchy, horrible, evil song in the world. It's terrible. I hate this thing. If I could take this and wipe it off the face of the planet, I would. Mm. But this girl, she's making millions of dollars. Wow. Selling this terrible song, it just reached pop charts. It broke all these records as like she's a top female artist right now in hip hop. Blah blah blah. She, she's oh. able to make money and become successful at that. There are YouTubers that literally all they do is go around and eat food, and they make money, like real money, hundred thousand dollars a year kind of money, doing that kind of stuff in America because they turned the heat up on the hustle and went after it and made it happen. So like. Urgh. like mm-hmm. guys if you're listening stop complaining get busy go make your dreams happen you're in america come on let's do it <laughs> oh my gosh i love it i love it you you said it so succinctly that's so terrific you know because in life we have same amount of time every individual from young people to older to middle age everybody got same time you know same number of seconds same number of minutes if we can really realize what we are earning like this year, even if we are 14 years of age, let's ask ourselves at 18 years of age, how much did I really earn? Am I burdened to my parents? Or can I really crush it and raise and save money and make money? You know, and I really like Grant Cardone. Grant is, I'm 65. I may be 66 this You're year. You're not 65. Yeah, I am. No way. 
No way. Yes, I. Yes way. <laughs> when you guys need to check the video, this guy. I thought you were like forty-five. Yeah, the energy. <laughs> He's got the a forty-five-year-old energy. Yeah. Oh, totally. thank you, thank you. I just, you know, feel so positive. I, when I was doing W two, I retired a couple of three years back from the my fundraising business and all because my real estate took over so much. And now I work a few hours a day, which is exciting. But the thing is, you know, you can really utilize time wisely because 80-20 rule is so pre precious. Pareto principle, you know, that 20% of activity in a day can bring 80% of the result. Yeah. And we can crush it. We can really use our time wisely. And if we use our time wisely with priorities in life, we'll grow so much. I mean, you know, when people think that they want to take two months to learn something, I want to learn in one week. Why not? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. those things are available. Internet is amazing out there. And of course, you know, I just wanted to say some little plug on my youth academy. It will be free for life. All the young people can come there and get learned from me and from my other partners and Stanford students and other digital directors who are collaborating with me to build the Youth Academy. It's called wow. multifamilyyouthacademy.com and it will well, be free to all the young people. I want to put that in the show notes. Um, guys, definitely Please. check that out. www.simplewholesaling.com forward slash episode 94. There'll be all the links and mentions there. So definitely sure. check that out. Yeah, yeah definitely. Thank you. One thing I want to point out that it just kind of, I'm coming back to you when you're talking, Vinny, and I think that you talked about you, you were studying before mm -hmm. the class about yeah. what you, about what you were going to learn about and i think yeah. that's so backwards of <laughs> our culture you know yeah. we we go to school and we don't even know what we're going to learn and then we show up and then we're just kind of unprepared and then we go home and then we do the homework of what we learned about and you talked about actually studying yeah. before the class yeah. and i think I think that talk to us about that a little bit. What what does that mean to you? Because I think you can really apply that in so many areas of your life. Which, you know, if um, if I'm going to an appointment with someone, it's a really important appointment for me. Mm -hmm. I need to be prepared, and I need to study maybe the person or what we're going to talk about before the appointment, so that. I am, I'm really prepared, but why did you talk about that a little bit about, you know, what, what does that do to somebody when you can be prepared and study a subject before the actual, you know, class or day or appointment? And what does that all mean and look like? It is amazing. It's amazing. I'm so glad you said that again. I think that was instilled by my dad. And he was very visionary in our all the children, you know, to say, hey, we got to really learn the subject matter. You've got to understand the principles behind, not just cram, you know, what the teacher tells you. You've got to understand the systems. And I think that's what my son is, you know, our son, Neil. And I mean, he never studied. He would just know the concept so much he will crush it in high school, never asked us anything, any help whatsoever. I'm just saying that. I hope he doesn't mind sharing that. But he will do all his homework in 40 minutes every night, wow. you know, because he understood the concept and the principles. Same thing, let's apply to my sales career, my fundraising days, and my meeting the appointments, you know, like you just said. I always have mentioned, and I pr propagate that very much, Automobile University is the word I use, and I've given lectures on it, and I've recorded on it. I believe we should not be listening to too much of the talk show programs in the car as we are traveling from one appointment to next appointment or going from, even when I go to get milk or go to Costco, I'm listening to positive material in the car. So it's so important that we feed our mind with positive things and listening to some, you know, like the Zig Ziglar's and the Tom Hopkins, I'm thinking about sales, right? And then, uh, of course, Tony Robbins and, you know, you, you, you name it, Jim Rohn and all these people, mentors have shaped my thinking. 
and they can shape everybody's thinking for free, totally free, because you, you just go to Google. Google is my best friend, google.com, and you put down motivation video, everything will come. Or you say Jim Rowan, or say Tony Robbins, we don't have to spend 2000 I shouldn't say that. We did spend 10000 last year <laughs> with my kids and everybody. And, you know, Neil and Monica and my wife and I, we spent 10000 went to Tony's, you know, seminar because our kids wanted to go there, which is great. Four days we spent. But the thing is, everything is so much available. YouTube.com. YouTube is the best, best motivator in life, I think. If we need to really get an uplifting message, we have to just say motivate me today or this morning. Just say that. There are beautiful videos which are right there at our fingertips. And by listening to them in the morning and at night and during the car, it will change us. It mm -hmm. will change us to the best. And we'll be able to really change our mind and mindset. If we change our mindset, it's no telling what can be accomplished. Amen. Amen. So I, good. No, I love that, you know, because a lot of people say, I don't have time to, to read or I don't have time to, to listen to things. And, but you're really just talking about everyday life. You yes. know, you get in your car, you go to your job, you do, uh, you do that instead of turning on the news or instead or music of or... yeah, music, any of that, you, you can turn on this positive thinking. And I believe that Vinny is right. It will change you and everybody's going to start taking notice of this, this different person. You'll start to think about things differently. And all of a sudden things that used to make you upset or, or things that used to, you know, shake you a little bit all of a sudden are not. And uh, it's because, you know, you have that positive. And Vinny, you just ooze of all that. So yeah, I appreciate, <laughs> you know, you can definitely tell you are an, uh, you know, a continuous learner, you know, all the time just by taking oh all that gosh. in. <laughs> you said it. Oh, my gosh. I learn every day. At 66 this year, I'm learning so many things. And I use a notepad on my iPhone. I use Trello. I use a lot of things. I take really good notes on my, you know, any contact. I have like 7,900 contacts in my iPhone. You know, I like to just, if I meet somebody, I want them to get to know them. And I want to really impart some knowledge, hopefully, and value add, I call it. You know, and I ask people, how can I add value to you today? you know, and let, to, let them tell me a little bit more about them. And if I can really leave them as a little, some small thought, which can make them, you know, and me a better person, that's what I look for. The key thing is, if we can give so much out, the universe will give so much to you. You will not believe it. Yeah. It, it's, it's just that the law of attraction is such a, it's just a great thing, you know, the book and everything and our videos are there. And that is so true. Law of attraction always keeps on working 24 hours, 365 days a week. But it's for us to utilize that in a good way. Yeah. If we yeah. don't utilize it, then it won't bring. You know, I mean, to be truthful, goal setting, I would love to mention also to all your audience, please write down your goals. As now we are looking at on the 9th of January, 2018, we can crush it. I mean, what we did last year doesn't matter. But if we could save, I'm going to make five times the income this year or next year. And if somebody gave that check to them and locked it up in the locker and gave the key, but the key, key can be only given if we accomplish this, 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 you know, I mean, what would we do? What would mm. we do daily? And how would we prioritize our life? How would we delegate? And how would we really think at the end of the day, did I spend today in the best possible way? If we did or if we didn't, let's make a decision to do better tomorrow. Yeah. You know, but then tomorrow will become today again. So we need to only focus on today. What's important is today. Love that. Love that. Thank you. This is just an amazing episode, Vinny. Thank you for, you know, sharing <laughs> this mindset. I, you know, Jaron can attest to it. We, we love talking about this. I, I believe that this is the most important thing. It, this is the business that if you can get the yeah. mindset right, everything else will just kind of fall into place. It's not really about the numbers. You can learn all that, 
but yeah. it's this that's that's the most difficult. Yeah, my my team um, moving forward with the land stuff. Um, yeah. Where you know I have it required that they ha- they read at least one book a month, and I provide Excellent. it for the team. But like it's mandatory reading, and I Excellent. I mean everything, you know it's it's just going after this stuff is really how you win at life. If you want to be successful, you have to be you have to be the first one there. Like going back to you know learning before the class even starts, like that's a recipe for success. Like that's the level of degree, you know, like not to toot my own horn or whatever, but like this, this year, right? Like there's a lot of transitions going out. There's a lot of things happening while everyone's celebrating on Christmas. You know what I'm doing? I'm working. Mm -hmm. Like I'm watching a movie, Christmas movie, but I'm, I got my laptop open. I'm working on stuff like New Year's ears, you know, like that kind of stuff. Like I'm right now in my life, I'm putting the time in because I know right now it's time to sow. Right now I have seed and it's time to sow. And I got to be diligent. And when everyone else is sleeping, I got to be the one that's up early morning running in eight degree re- weather. You know, I got to be the one who's out there going after it. Um, otherwise, uh, I'm going to get comfortable. I'm going to get lazy. and I'm never going to accomplish anything. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's the level, right? What he's saying is prime example. Guy showed up, $7 in his pocket. He's a multimillionaire now. Like what's the what's what's the what's the medium there? What's the thing that's missing to get from A to, to C? What's B? It's hustle. Yeah, it's hustle. Hustle, it's hustle and and growth mindset. Yeah, Definitely. growth mindset, goal setting, and then putting forth you know the efforts. And you know, if I may just say a little bit about the syndication world. Yeah, I want to, and I want to talk about that before we transition to the next uh, section of the show. Vinny, talk about what what are you doing now? Uh, you're doing some syndications. What is that uh, doing for you? Kind of put a plug out there of, of what you're doing. Oh, totally, totally. My main purpose in life right now is that you know I've been done. I've done 26 syndications, and out of those 12 were in the last two years. Can you believe it? Wow. I've been just crushing it. I purchased about $132 million worth of properties, multifamily in Texas and Georgia, and I'm buying more. I'm just starting a $50 million equity fund coming up in seven days, uh, so forth. I've been working on it for four months, but because of the correction coming, we don't know when it's going to come, but we want to be prepared when it is coming, because when people are selling, you need to be buying, (laughs) you know, things like that. But then, the key thing is that there is so much money around us with our relatives, friends, and, you know, our doctors, attorneys, acquaintances, you know, the field of circle, I call it, right? Uh, level one, level two, level three, level four. There is so much money in retirement plans and cash, which is people would love to invest as an equity partner with somebody who would then give them returns. That's what we do, our company. And I've started four companies and two of them are with Monil, which is Monica and Neil, our kid's name. We combined the two to make it Monil Investment Group and Monil Management Group. (laughs) (laughs) You know, so we acquire in one, I'm the CEO of that. And then we manage in the Monil Management Group. So we don't take third party outside. But the idea is, to be able to harness all this money through syndication, through SEC ruling and everything, pull the money and then purchase a great asset so that we can really crush it and give returns back. Like we give about eight to 9% per year return back as the cash flow, and then about close to 50 to 80% return lump sum when we sell the asset because we do value add, we buy in. B and C properties. We don't buy A at all. They're very expensive, but we buy B and C in A and B neighborhoods so that the property increases in value and things like that. And uh, that's what I teach also, you know, uh, to the students. So, so on that, um, one of my questions, um, do you, do you have like online students or are you talking primarily for that nonprofit thing that you're, you're coming up to teach, uh, high school students entrepreneurship? 
Oh no, actually I have two platforms right now on Kajabi. Kajabi is one of the best, you know, outfit out there, as you know, Brandon.com and Oprah and everybody, you know, is on Kajabi. So I also selected that and paying for it. So I have multifamily syndication academy.com for adults, you know, for entrepreneurs and so forth who want to really learn my business. That's Can you for- say that name again one more time? Sure. It's multifamily syndication academy.com. Big word. I should make it kind of smaller. And uh, I'm also doing invest with Vinny, V-I-N-N-E-Y. I got that a domain name. I'm going to maybe link it to that one. But then I have multifamily youth academy.com, which is the free one. Multifamily youth. youth. If I put youth in there, then that is what that is, you know. And then my website is vinichopra.com. So everybody could see who Vinny is and my testimonials and about me and my podcast. I've given, I think, 32 podcast interviews so far. I have quite a few more coming. But then I write blogs also. My main thinking in life right now is to really crush it you know, in my taking care of uh, the, you know, my goal is billion dollar wholesale uh, sales, you know, I mean, uh, value of the multifamily to get in the next three, four, five years, billion dollar and uh, $7 to billion dollars. That's pretty good. I think yeah. mine <laughs> not bad. <laughs> That's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> no, it's so good. And so it's so amazing that you're, you know, working with the youth. I think that, you know, I know my mindset, obviously getting into entrepreneurship has changed so much and I'm trying to instill that just in my own family, my own kids. And I was actually having a conversation with my daughter, Kaylin. We just got back from a father daughter trip we took down in Florida and she's, she's a really, she's 10 years old. She's really witty and she's able to just kind of put the charm on and get people to, to like her and, and to do things like that. And I'm a big component of the book, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yeah, so thank you so much for helping out with the youth, Vinny. I think that's, that's so amazing. I think there's just kind of a disconnect with our youth and just teaching them about entrepreneurship. They don't learn that in school. And uh, I just think that amazing. And I want to go to the next, next section of the show. I think it's a good time to just kind of transition into the part of the show that Jaron and I like to call Going Deep. <laughs> All right. Yes. Hey, I like to crush it in the deeper way. Yeah, let's go. do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, well, hey, Vinny, in this section, we just like to ask you a little bit about your why and, and why are you doing uh, you know, what you're doing. So what satisfaction do you get about teaching other people? You're teaching adults now and you're also teaching the youth. Um, what's kind of the goal behind that and why do you spend so much time um, and effort doing that? You know, I'm so glad you asked me that. My life has been really shaped by people around me. And I really owe a lot to the society and to the, you know, people of America, my leaders, my, you know, because I was raising money for youth organizations all my life for nonprofit and profit organizations and giving assemblies and things in front of 400 people, 500 people, thousand people, you know, and like that. So I have had a very soft heart for the young people, youth of America, to really build their builds, uh, you know, build their dreams. I really achieved a lot more can be achieved if we set our mind right. So that's one thing. I also believe that, you know, we could give back to the society if we give value to the future leaders of America. And that's what I believe with the young ones. If I can even help one person in my life, that'd be a very good life, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why I want to spend more time in getting my philosophies, my thinking. I would love to send you some links, if that's okay. And that way you could put them in my show notes or like that, where youth can see what my mind is. And I think they'll get a lot out of my philosophies, you know, right in the first part. And then I'm going to be building this academy, adding more to it, you know, every week because it's online. 
the best thing I like in this whole thing is you can keep on adding and changing and I like to, you know, send it on Facebook and make it a very big mission so that a lot of youth will be able to look at positively about entrepreneurship, about investing in real estate, especially and learning so that it took me 65 years <laughs> to get to where I am. I think the youth can be where I am when they're 35. Mm, wow. That's awesome. That's crazy. Oh man, that's so good. I love that. I love so that. good. I mean, I don't even know. I don't even have any other questions. I'm just searching all this up. I, you know, I don't have any other going deep question. Brett, you go ahead, take it. Yeah. So you know, again, just thank you so much. Uh, you know, for all of your knowledge and wisdom here, and just uh, serving. So you know, they call you Mr. Smiles. You know, and uh, obviously with your personality, we can definitely tell that you're so happy and you're so uh such a positive person and has there ever been times where people just try to you know take that away from you they're, they're like they're like energy vampires they suck the energy out of you and how do you get around those people and keep that positive attitude and keep going forward because some people out there listening right now and it, it could be their their family their spouses mm -hmm. it could be their friends that they're hanging out with it could be because we all kind of have this human nature that, you know, if somebody else is doing well and, and they're positive and we're not, or they're succeeding and we're not, we almost want them to kind of not succeed. There's a lot of people out there like that. So how do you keep the energy going uh, when you have all these things coming at you that are negative? That is so good question. Again, boy, this is amazing interview. You know, I definitely would like to say that I, in my mindset, I feel I have a shield, even though people don't see that shield. I like to say to my mind, see, internally, we have to be strong. Internally, we need to be so positive that every arrow that comes, it never penetrates us. So when people share with me their negative thing, I like to look at it, I listen to it, but I then want to give them positive feedback or show them a perspective why they are feeling what they are feeling. Now they cannot change. If I'm there, if they have been having that kind of thinking for two years, three years, 10 years, whole life, I want to make an impact and say, hey, think about this. Or let me buy you a book or send you a book or send you a link of this little video on YouTube, listen to that because what you're doing, self-pity is not going to get you anywhere. Nope. It won't. It nope. will even take you to a spiral down below. And the more deeper you go, the harder it is to come out of the well. Mm -hmm. So you want to really make that impact on their life. And by then, you know, if you're coaching or mentoring or like that, you know, in big sister, big, you know, big brother, tremendous organizations, you know, and the key thing is to shield yourself. That's one thing I would like to say. The second thing is don't feel that where you are today, that you will stay there. If you feel bad and don't take charge of your life right now, next five days, next five years will be the same or worse. Hmm. So do you want to change next five days? So take an accountability, write it out in a journal. You know, I believe that young people should have a journal. I really believe that. They need to write every day what their accomplishments are. Not to write, maybe one or two bad things that happened or they would like to correct, but majority of positive. Many times we write five negatives and one positive. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. See, we got to get our psychology, our subconscious, our conscious to really learn. See, subconscious, what is it? It's just taking pictures of everything. It's recording. So we need to really talk to ourselves in the morning and at night. And I believe in vision board and I believe in pictures. You know, what we want to become one day, we are in the process of becoming today. Today is the time that we could decide that, you know what, I'm not going to live the life that I've been living for the last five years or 10 years or 15 years or whatever. But today we could change the state like Tony Robbins says, you know, right in one second, one minute, you could say pain and 
pleasure, right? Comfort zone is in everybody. I mean, I would love to not get up at 4.30 in the morning. But you know what? When I was doing W-2 job, I was getting up at 7 o'clock and putting on the snooze and everything. I'm 65, 66 now. I'll be in, in August 27th this year. But I get up at 4.30 and 5 and I'm so excited. I don't need to really have any coffee or anything. Because I want to write, I want to, you know, tape and I want to do other things and look at my gratitude list, you know, to say gratitude to the people and do yoga and do exercise and do the brisk walking, seven to eight, cold or shine, you know, as cold in the Bay Area, it doesn't get that cold. But, you know, all those things, because next 25 years is so important for me. Mm-hmm. I'll be 90 years of age, but a lot of people at my age just give up. Hmm. They true. say we are retired. And I'm they just there at the end. Oh my gosh, you know, yeah. and every time we don't stimulate our mind, we are degrading ourselves. And watching TV and walking and this and that, we gotta stimulate, we gotta give ourselves and go and give go to charities and give ourselves volunteer time and you know find a hobby and do something, put a vision board for next 10, 15 years. Yeah, that's awesome. I was just thinking about that. I was thinking about, you know, when I was down in Florida and uh, just the word experience has really come alive in me, you know. Like I said, I took my daughter down there and we were experiencing just life. And I feel wow. like we, in our culture in America or whatever, when we're watching TV, when we're watching sports, we're watching other people, we're watching other people experience life. And I've never, and I've never, people said, why don't you watch, you know, sports or you watch this or whatever that. And I couldn't put my finger on it because I was a sports guy. I was raised in a sports house and all this. And I couldn't put my finger on it. Why don't I watch it? I don't know. Why am I not interested in it? And I think it all boils down to, I don't want to watch other people experience life. I really want to experience it myself. And uh, the things that you talked about, Vinny, which is you're excited to experience life. You're excited to, you know, experience the next 25 years. And people at your age, like I said, they're sometimes they feel like they're at the end of experiencing, yeah. but they're just at the beginning, you know? There's so many, yeah. there's so much more experiences they can have. And uh, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I love it, man. Uh, sign me up. <laughs> sign us up, Vinny. <laughs> Let's do it. Awesome. <laughs> Well, hey, Vinny, we're, we're, we're kind of running out of time. We're going to uh, ask you a couple of – the last thing that we like to end the show on is uh, a thing called the touch of randomness, and we're going to sure. ask you a random question here. So just kind of name the first thing that comes to your mind. So uh, we, we just got one question for you today, and that is, Vinny, they, they call you Mr. Smiles, like yes. you talked about. And what is the saddest movie that you've ever seen? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, saddest movie. You know, I don't watch too many movies, I have to say. Okay. I like to get reviews and all. I'm getting one thing. All right, let's do the other touch of random sense. Okay. No, 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 sadness. Yeah, I would love to cheer that. We went to see Vietnam and Cambodia a few years back, my wife and uh-huh. I. The family, it really affected me, the killing fields of Cambodia. And I wrote about it and I told my family I was depressed for four days, what effect it made me. And I went back to 78, 1978 is the year when I joined the company, which I retired after 40 years. And, uh, you know, it really affected me for four days. But then again, you know, at the same time, negative feelings should affect you, but then you should really erase them or do something about them. That's what I would like Mm -hmm. to say. You know, it's so important in life that we take the best out of that, whatever situation there is. And there are lots of negative things happen in my business and other places, but I never look back like Harvey happened. You know, all this happened in Texas and all hurricanes. I could have just said as a CEO, oh my gosh, where are the damages? Blah, blah, blah. Right. But I just took upon it and I got me a public adjuster to fight for me you know, with the insurance companies and all that. And it's becoming a positive experience. And all my assets are going to be renovated, you know, whatever portions of them, you know. I mean, we didn't get hurt that much. But no, go ahead. For another thing I wanted to say about smile, I never, I used to smile a lot. But 40 years back, when I started getting trophies and plaques, my company people changed my name 
from Kumar in the middle. My name is Vinod Kumar Chopra. They took the Kumar out and put smile in there. <laughs> Literally, that's the key, you know. They said Vinod Smile Chopra. And then I became a nickname of Vinny, which is V-I-N-N-E-Y. And now people call me Vinny in business world. And they call me Vinod in my personal life. But I do smile a lot. A lot of people think, do I smile when I sleep also? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, it is contagious. I, I think that, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I don't think you can have a negative conversation with you at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be, he'd be like Rocky, you know, in the press conference. Do you got anything derogatory to say about the champ? Derogatory? Yeah, what? he's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Well, hey, see, thank you. See, people already know what's negative about them. Isn't that true? Yeah. You know, yeah. We always know our, you know, handicaps. So it's great to tell them more about what positive so that they can really become even more of what they are, you know, positive. Yeah, it's so awesome. cool. So cool. Well, that wraps it up today, Vinny. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on the show. And I know that, um, Jaren, we got so much out of today's show and the interview. Yeah, I know really good. you guys listening out there, uh, we'd love to hear your feedback and comments on the interview with Vinny today. But uh uh, Vinny, one more time before we let you go here, where is the best place for someone to go to learn about you, learn about your education and all that? Oh, sure. You know, the best place to go is Vinny, V-I-N-N-E-Y. And I love elephants <laughs> from India. So I put an E in there instead of V-I-N-N-Y, usually put it that way. But there is an E also, Vinny Chopra, like Deepak Chopra, he's a renowned author and you know, very big motivator. So Chopra is the same, C-H-O-P-R-A, vinichopra.com. And you could call me or email me also, vinny at vinichopra.com and I will respond to it. My team will. The place they would like to, if they want to learn about multifamily syndication, it's the www.multifamilysyndicationacademy.com. And then, you know, they can, uh, you know, call me, reach me. I'm a very reachable person. Sweet. Awesome. Well, that is going to be in the show notes, guys, at simplewholesign.com forward slash episode 94. And this is with Vinny Chopra. Thank you so much, Vinny. We wish you uh -huh. so much success in the future. Thanks for all of your wisdom on the show today. Thank you. And I want to thank you guys. I listened to some of your episodes and what a great value you are bringing. God bless you. It's uh, such thank a great you. Thing. God Karen. bless you, Vinny. That's great. Thank you. <laughs>